the city begins to grow up. People, races, and religions meet and mingle. They are the builders of Sao Paulo. The Japanese is a younger Paulista, a different Paulista, but undoubtedly already a Paulista. He also lives an agitated life, although he maintains his millinery traditions. The Moorish style house counterbalances the tenement buildings, which reminds one of Sicily and Naples. The Martinelli building, the first pyramid erected by the Italians as a monument to their progress. They also are proud of being historical Paulistas. Summer cooled off by the rain and by the altitude stimulating winter, more like autumn to the Europeans, in a climateric dance generally temperate. In 1930, the rush towards industrialization started. And so did the slogans, Sao Paulo, the fastest growing city in the world. Sao Paulo cannot stop. Private enterprise faces all challenges and is always ready to proclaim its own accomplishments as the biggest in South America. This stadium is an example. Sao Paulo releases the demon of haste Things have to be done, and done fast. Trains, buses, bring and take everything. Hopes, despairs, happiness, decisions. An endless routine in a nerve-wracking symphony. hundred years do not yet separate the provincial tranquility from the feverish agitation of the metropolis and from the important scientific and cultural center it has been turning into. The streets that appeared to be so broad have today become too narrow. The old-fashioned Paulista Avenue used to be the dividing line between the wealthy district and the commercial sector. It is no longer so. The god coffee gives way to the engineer, to the industrial manager, to the technocrat. Around the old Martinelli pyramid, the concrete forest is to be found, compact, large, angular. The big houses of 1900 are being besieged. The old face becomes unrecognizable, crowded, longilinear, disheveled. However, the big forest has also its clearings. A city that never stops. A city that carries itself 
that lodges people coming from all over the world, from other parts of the country, from the small inland town, people that have forced themselves to change their pace of living in order to synchronize themselves to the bewildered, conflicting rhythm of its development. And if we live in Sao Paulo, we can find out, dissimulated, hidden in its haste towards a future, in its vital and disorderly growth, a facet of its palpitating humanity, the humanism of those who try to accomplish. <laughs> 